a fiasco, a tragedy, an embarrassment. All descriptions we've heard of what is happening in Afghanistan right now. The Taliban is taking over and Americans and those Afghanis who helped the U.S. during the nearly 20 year war. They're trying to get out and they're struggling to do so. Boise has quite an extensive Afghan population with refugees being placed here since before the war began. Most here still have family back there and they can describe these last couple of days differently. More of a nightmare. The Shams took their four daughters out of Afghanistan shortly after the Taliban took over the country. The first go around in the mid 90s. Going through Iran and Turkey, it took them about seven years to make it to Idaho. The four daughters are now business owners in Boise, but there is another another daughter who stayed behind in Kabul. So what's it like to watch what is happening right now and not be able to do anything about it? Mixing meringue, folding phyllo dough, and loading up lemon tarts is how the Sham sisters spend most mornings. It's just some of what they've been doing since opening the Sunshine Spice Cafe on the Boise bench back in December of 2019. The name comes from the nickname for saffron an ingredient that flavors almost all their recipes. Recipes that are a kind of fusion of Afghan favorites and put together by Bahar and Katra in the back. While Nargis and Omaira Would you like a receipt? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Are responsible for the front, including the art on the walls. The Sham sisters and their parents arrived in Boise in 2003, refugees from Afghanistan. So it's gonna be $2.39. Omaira was just a toddler when she last saw her home country. So she doesn't remember much, except. I remember when the Taliban came, because <laughs> uh, as they say, like when you're a kid and you experience something horrible, it never goes away from your head. It always stays with you. As I was growing up, I was getting like nightmares of something like that would happen here. But now as uh, the Taliban started to come again, now I know like how I was feeling that, at that time. So you're kind of getting those feelings? It's getting, it's coming back, yes. Yeah. Uh, they knock on doors. If somebody has uh, younger girls, they say you have to get married because you cannot go outside without a man. You're one of five daughters. Five daughters and my parents, yes. And that's why they wanted to leave? Yes. So they came and knocked on the door, on our door. They said that they want to get married with my sister, older sisters. And, and that's when my dad was like, okay, this is not going good. We are not safe, we have to flee. So all of this happening right now, and all of these memories flooding back to mm -hmm. you, Yep. how hard is that? It's really hard. And especially when I have a sister in knees in Afghanistan. When was the last time you spoke with your sister? We speak over the phone but we are afraid if, what if they disconnect the internet and they don't usually have like power 24 hours a day. They only get power like a few, a couple hours a day. So like when they have internet and power, we can speak. Your sister and your niece, mm -hmm. uh, basically on their own, right? Just the two of them? Yeah, just the two of them, nobody else with them. What's that like for two women alone in Kabul right now? It's very scary because like they are not sure if they are safe to go get buy food outside. So they're always like in fear of going outside. It's like they are in prison, like how house prison, like how you get house prison. That's how they are. They cannot go outside because they fear their life. Women's rights and safety have always been an issue in Afghanistan which is a big reason the Sham sisters started the Sunshine Spice Cafe. And our first intention was to be able to gather like money and be able to send money and help women in Afghanistan. My sister, my niece, uh, they were like a bridge between us. So we would send them money and then they would find families who were in need. And this saffron tea was going to be the next phase of that. My niece and my sister was the bridge who they, they would send like export saffron to us and tea. This is like a tea we were going to launch like in a week or so, but because of the Taliban, it affected our business. It affected like how we would help women in Afghanistan. Now we cannot do that. You were helping people, you were yeah. sending money. 
and now it just stops like that? Yes. So like when we first started this business, COVID came. We closed like for five months. And then we, during that time, we also lost my dad. So from the beginning of opening this business, we have faced so many difficulties, but we never give up because we really need to help women in Afghanistan. They need our help. Like if we cannot help them, who's going to help them? Amira said she graduated from BSU with a degree in criminal justice with the goal of becoming a lawyer, but decided starting this business would be a better way to help those women in Afghanistan. And so far, it was before this week. They've sent thousands of dollars back to Afghanistan. Her sister back in Afghanistan was a doctor who lost her husband a few years ago. Her niece, the exporter, which is how she was able to send the saffron. Amira is worried about what will happen when the Taliban finds out about that. She spent some time on a Zoom call yesterday with the hope of finding out options to help her sister and her niece maybe apply for asylum here in the United States. Sadly, she said, she can't do much about it at this point.